Stevie Nicks. One special night. Saturday, October 28th, live at FedEx Forum. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss Stevie Nicks. Live at FedEx Forum. American Roadshow, August 24th at FedEx Forum, with special guests Marcus King and Alan Stone, on sale now at LiveNation.com. Chris Stapleton's All-American Roadshow. Eight-time Grammy Award-winning, Anita Baker. Anita Baker, the songstress, live in concert. For one night only. FedEx Forum, November 22nd, 2023. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss your chance to see the legendary Anita Baker, live in Memphis. The summer concert experience of a lifetime. My name is Erica Batu. With the Grammy Award winning Erica Batu. He gave me the life that I came to live. Erica Batu, like you've never seen her before. The music, the vibe of Erica Badu with special guest Yasin Bey. The M Follow Me Tour with Erica Badu. July 21st at FedEx Forum. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Memphis. Where you at? <laughs> Where you at? Where you at? This is unbelievable. Where you at? Monday Night Raw is where it's at. Where you at? Welcome to Monday Night Raw. Live in Memphis, Monday, August 28th. Tickets and ringsider packages available now. Feels great to feel the sunshine. Got her on a date like it's all mine. Just got paid and it's all time. The Jessica Benson Show with C.J. Hurt. Live from the Grind City Media Studios on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. What's up, everybody? It is Monday, June 5th. We made it to another week. We love it here. Jessica Benson with you from the Grind City Media Studios in Memphis, Tennessee. The one and only Bennett Doyle back in studio with us. CJ Hurt out another day. Big Bet Bennett. What's up, friend? Did you have a good weekend? I had a great weekend. A great weekend. I had a great weekend. How was the gizzard lizard wizard? It was amazing. Okay, so uh, we talked about this a little bit on Friday. I went to uh, Pelham, Tennessee, which is literally in the middle of nowhere in Tennessee. And in Pelham, there is this just in the middle of nowhere concert <laughs> venue called the Caverns. And it's literally, they have two stages. One is in a cave. It's literally a stage inside of a cave. And one is a big outdoor amphitheater, which is where we saw them. They played four nights. Uh, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard played four nights. We saw them on Saturday. It was incredible. Great concert. Uh, really cool venue. Highly recommend anyone, if you get a chance to go see a concert uh, there at the Caverns, it's a really cool place. I am adding it to my list. Yeah, yeah. I am adding King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, yeah. which honestly, one of the best band names of all time, yep. simply because the 
art, art, art rhyming mm-hmm. mentality, mm-hmm. I'll remember it forever. Yeah, they've been Never in the game for a long time. They got like 20 something albums. Fantastic. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. I am going to listen to them. I am going to go watch a concert in the cave someday. I cannot Good. wait. I had a great weekend, busy weekend. One of those weekends that didn't quite feel like I had any rest, but in the best of ways. Finally saw The Little Mermaid. And? Recommend. Exceeded my expectations. Halle Excellent. Bailey, incredible. I have a couple gripes with it. I'll talk about it in today's Hot Mess Express. Celebrated Pride, downtown Memphis. Awesome turnout. Yep. Downtown on Beale Street. So much joy, so much energy. It was a great time to be out there. We celebrated our director, Robbie Weaver's birthday. Shout out Miss Kim in the chat always. Finally met her IRL in real life. Had the opportunity to say happy birthday to Robbie, even though his birthday's not for another week. And then last night I went to this awesome event with my husband and La Bonner and Newcourt Steel out at the Peabody so it was like thing 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 no rest but luckily was able to catch game two of the NBA finals and we'll get into that let's do a quick setup of today's show no brooms will be necessary in those NBA finals put them away because the Miami Heat went ahead and tied up that series at one game apiece before it shifts to South Beach Miami beating Denver on the Denver Nuggets home court last night. That's the first home loss for the Denver Nuggets when Nikola Jokic played since March 12th. We will get into how the Heat keep doing it. I really don't know, but we keep watching them do it over and over again. We will have that hot mess express. Terrell Davis looked absolutely miserable at the game last night. LaMelo Ball got a new watch and it's super weird we will see the wildest of wild pitch walk-offs tom cruise is big bad at oppenheimer and the barbie movie a barbie movie story a day keeps the doctor away and we will continue all of that gary Parrish going to join us about 40 minutes in as he does every monday we made it through the weekend without any concrete news getting leaked on the john morant situation it is now a continued waiting game to find out what the NBA will be doing in terms of disciplinary action with John Morant. Adam Silver, of course, last week trying not to distract from the NBA Finals, but doing a little distraction by insinuating some ominous tones when it comes to Jaws. So we'll catch up with Gary on that. And then Memphis Mondays, we have a very special guest, Derek Dillon, wide receiver, special teams for the Memphis Showboats, who have won, Bennett, how many games in a row? Be five. One, two, three, four, five Memphis Showboats wins in a row. And Derek Dillon, of course, had that massive 109 yard kick return, tied for the longest kick return in pro football history. And the USFL counts towards that. So he's been contacted by the Pro Football Hall of Fame. They okay. wanted gloves. They want Memphis I, Showboats, like Derek Dillon's gloves in the Hall of Fame. We'll talk to him about that. He went to LSU, was on that national championship team, played with Joe Burrow, played for Coach O. We'll get some stories from Derek Dillon. But we, of course, have to start with the NBA Finals Game 2. And I'm ready to declare the Miami Heat are the Emperor's New Groove team of basketball because you got to put them in a box and then you got to put the box in another box and the box in another box. And then you have to smash it with a hammer or else they're going to come back and find ways to win and shock and surprise. And there's no quite distinct way of how do they do it. Jimmy Butler called it the give a damn, don't give a damn factor last night after the game. I think it's more like intelligent desperation. They play with such smart desperation down the stretch, something that we didn't see from the Denver Nuggets last night. And my biggest thing, are, are people still not entertained by this series? Like, are there still weirdos out there waking up this morning saying, eh, I'm checking out in the NBA Finals this year? Because last night's game was wildly entertaining. Yeah, uh, I've never seen Emperor's New Groove, so I don't get the reference. What? Yeah, I know. Sorry. Uh, it's a blind spot for me. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't really understand the reference, but I'm, I'm, wow. follow, I'm following along. Okay, on... so in the Emperor's New Groove, yeah, yeah. she turns the Emperor into a llama. It's a mm-hmm. great plot point. I can't believe you haven't seen it. The evil villain in the Emperor's New Groove. Her name is Yzma, played by the late, great Eartha Kitt, one of the best voice villains in Disney history when we did our villains draft. I'm not sure where I took her, but she was somewhere in that top five. And so she has this quote where she wants to kill him. And so she said, you have to put him in a box and then put him in another box and then put the box in another box and then you smash it with a hammer. That's what you have to do to the heat, Bennett. That's right. No, I mean, it was... uh I don't think anyone's surprised by it because this is proven to be like the most resilient team in the playoffs this year. And, um, you know, it, it's funny after the first game, like, you know, you, you dissected and, um, 
you know, there was the whole, uh, did the Miami Heat find out something with Haywood Highsmith, like putting him on Jokic in, you know, late in that game, and he plays six minutes in the game last night. And it's just, I mean, these guys, they've just got a bunch of, uh, a bunch of dogs, man. Like, they just do. Like, uh, Jimmy Butler, uh, he was better last night, still not like, you know, a massive Jimmy Butler uh, performance like we've seen in these playoffs, but um, – I'm just I'm so impressed with them. Like it's it's I I want them to win the title. I mean you I really do. yeah I do. My mom texted me last night and said the same thing. She said I don't know why, but I want the Miami Heat yeah. to win the title. And I know Denver's I'm never torn. won it. But, yeah, well, okay, here's the thing. Uh, I was talking about this with GP on Friday. I'm kind of a hater, and so. <laughs> I don't want Denver to win their first ever championship because when that graphic comes up and the Grizzlies are on there, I want the Nuggets to remain okay. on there as well. Yeah, sorry. I like that. Team Petty, yeah. Bennett Doyle is rooting for the Heat simply so that the Nuggets have to stay in the non-title category That's right. with the Memphis Grizzlies. That's right. Okay. I, can, I want I us to get ours first, yeah. I do also think there is – I'm team funny. Mm-hmm. Like I'm always rooting for the funniest option. Yes. I want to laugh. And sometimes the Denver Nuggets and how they play basketball. And I laughed at Michael Porter Jr. last night because he was Casper the Friendly Ghost. I continue to laugh at Nikola Jokic, who I think is actually one of the funniest players in basketball just by nature or the way he plays the game. He is a point center, and he's huge, and Mm -hmm. he has a dad bod, and he does what he does. And we'll get into the whole Nikola Jokic factor of last night's loss for the Nuggets as he has 41 points but was limited to just four assists. Don't ask Eric Spolster about it. But we will hear from Eric Spolstra yeah. about it. But the way that the Heat have done this, it's funny. It's, I mean, truly, it's, it's the level of, I'll, I'll give you another movie reference mm-hmm. for a Monday morning, and we'll see if, if you get this one. It's, have you ever felt personally victimized by the Miami Heat? And you're going to have the Bucks raise their hand, and you're going to have the Knicks raise their hand, and you're going to have the Celtics win their hand, raise their hand, and now you have the Denver Nuggets raise their hand after last night, especially after that fourth quarter. Did you get it? I've heard you can't the quote. get a Mean I've Girls quote the, okay, on a Monday? Okay, okay, okay. I, I've seen Mean Girls plenty of times. I didn't, uh, sorry. Plenty of times. Yeah. We were talking over the weekend I I about the, the, the great movies that we'll share. You, like, your parents shared the classics yeah. with you. What are our classics? I said Mean Girls. And oh, it probably is. I don't um, know if that's fair. Yeah, I think that I think that counts as like a okay. classic of our Thank generation. Uh, other classics of our generation? I don't know. Uh Billy Madison, like, are we? Are, are you said funny, right? Happy Gilmore. Yeah. I said bridesmaids. Yeah, I think that counts. Okay. Modern classic. Sure. Yeah. Classic enough. Yeah. Classic-ish. I think so. Classic light, but there is this this nature of the Miami Heat keep victimizing people for counting them out, and last night was their tenth upset win of the postseason. They were eight point dogs. Last night was their seventh double digit comeback win of the postseason, their 28th win this season by five points or fewer. Eric Spolstra comes up with adjustments left and right. He's the adjustment king. You had Kevin Love back in the starting lineup to deal with some of those size issues that the Nuggets just throttled Miami with in game one. Duncan Robinson and Gabe Vincent are coming up with massive plays for you down the stretch. The Heat still haven't had the Jimmy game in this series, and you feel like that certainly is something that is lurking. And that fourth quarter will go down as, again, that desperation factor. And sure, it can be, as Jimmy Butler called it, the don't give a damn factor, and you're just out there playing basketball. But for the Heat to score 36 points on just 20 possessions, that's Wild. They shot 68.8% in the fourth quarter, and that is the third highest fourth quarter of an NBA Finals game in the last 25 years. And as you are watching it, you cannot help think to yourself, this is why you whisper Nuggets in four. This is why you whisper Nuggets in five. And there's always this hovering nature of you can't count the Miami Heat out. It is not fluky. It is who they are. And now this series shifts to Miami with it tied at one apiece. Forget about the altitude. It's dead and gone for the next two games. We're going to a glamour city. The palm trees are out. It's sparkly. It's humid down there in South Beach. And the Nuggets haven't been great on the road. This is a team where right. there are only three losses of the postseason all on the road, two in Phoenix, one in Minnesota. Of course, they went and swept the Los Angeles Lakers. But even during the regular season, the Denver Nuggets lost 22 road games this season. Yes, they were awesome at home, but you completely just gave up home court advantage. And I think that's why Michael Malone was a little spicy. I mean, one, you just 
lost, and so you're always upset. But the effort levels, the Nuggets just did not look like they were playing a game to go up 2 nothing. It looked a little lackadaisical. Yeah, I agree. And, I mean, what do they always say about game three in the playoffs? Like, it heavily favors the home team. I'm sure Miami's going to be a pretty big favorite in game three. And so – the series is clearly flipped. Um, I know you're going to talk about Spolstra because that was interesting, that exchange last night. Um, because me personally, like I know Jokic, what, 41 point, 41 point double double last 41, night? 41, 11, yeah. and 4. And yet we're sitting here like, did Jokic have a good game? And I'm like, that's just wild. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but I got to say, I do think there might be something to just making him a score and, and, and taking advantage of. of trying to shut down the other guys. I mean, Michael Porter Jr. was bad last night. You know, that's a guy that they've relied on in these playoffs. Um, they didn't get, like, huge games from a lot of their role players last night. I mean, you look, and Aaron Gordon had 12 points. Uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope, six. I mean, they're, they're getting, you know, 20 points from three of their starters. Yeah. I mean, it's it, clearly the strategy worked if that's, in fact, what Spolster was doing last night. Michael yeah. Porter Jr. is 3 of 17 from three in these first two games, and that's not going to fly. He had some right. big first quarter points for them. Again, that tone set by the Nuggets in game one, but he has to be better. Their role players have to outplay this group of heat vagabonds who continue to put together really meaningful moments from Duncan Robinson to Gabe Vincent. We'll get into that. Let's listen to what Eric Spolster had to say, because of course he was directly asked about the impact of trying to turn Nikola Jokic more into a shooter than a passer. This was Spo's response. Final question on the left. Hey coach, Ramona Shelburne, ESPN. Uh, this is probably oversimplifying things, but sometimes when, when teams play against Jokic, you, you turn him into a scorer, you turn him into a passer, and he controls the game. You, he only had four assists tonight. Yeah, that, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, it's just, that's the untrained eye that, that says something like that. This guy's an incredible player. You know, twice in two seasons, he's been the best player on this planet. You can't just say, <laughs> Oh, make him a score. <laughs> That's not how they play. They they have so many different actions that just get you compromised. Uh, we have to focus on what we do. Um, you know, we try to do things the hard way, um, and he requires you to do many things the hard way. Uh, and we he has our full respect. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Coach. Eric Spolstra's annoyance face stresses me out. Like, if I asked that question, and Ramona Shelburne's, like, the ultimate pro. Oh, yeah, she's, she's great. She's not going to care. But for me, I'd be like, oh. I feel like I got oh, yeah. in trouble <laughs> right. for asking That's right. about an obvious critical piece of last night's game for Denver. Like, it is what it is. And, you know, perhaps he doesn't want to show his cards and show his ultimate game plan and as they continue to adjust throughout the series. But Nikola Jokic took 13 more shots than any other teammate last night, and that has not been a winning strategy for the Nuggets. And I know that it's a relatively small sample size, and I never like to be hyperbolic over one postseason run, but it is what it is with Jokic. When he has 40-plus points, the Nuggets are 0-3 this postseason. When he is held under 40 points, they are 13-1. and And that is because Jokic, as a triple-double machine, right. is just that. A machine. He's unstoppable. But when you are able to take one of those critical pieces away from him as a passer, and listen, a part of it is some of his teammates missed some dumb shots, a la Michael Porter Jr., a la Aaron Gordon. But the Nuggets did still shoot 52% from the field. Like, it might not have been the most inspired 52% shooting mm -hmm. night from the Nuggets, but shots were made, and if you can limit what Jokic does as the driver of that offense, and especially as you continue to have to maneuver just the myriad of weird zones that the Heat throw out. At some point, you're watching the Heat's defense, and you're just like, I don't even know what the zone is. Like, 1-3-1? One, one? I haven't mm -hmm. seen this since I was playing in middle school. And they continue to just throw different looks at them. And if you can make Jokic not the best version of himself, sure, he's still giving you 41 points. That's great. But it's not great for Denver. And I think there really is something to it. I suppose funny. Like, I'll take, I'll take those kind of funny interactions anytime. And, and both coaches, like, for Spo to give that and then to go back to the Michael Malone element of it where, like, he was not impressed with his team's effort. And we shouldn't even have to be talking about effort in the NBA Finals. But this was Michael Malone kind of lighting into his team. Take a listen. Coach Brandon Kristoff from KOA here in Denver. Can you kind of, I don't know, figure out <laughs> why do you think your starters uh, that weren't Joker struggled scoring, I guess? Well, I don't think the that, that's the biggest question. 
no, let's talk about effort. I mean, this is the NBA Finals, and we're talking about effort. That's a huge concern of mine. You know, and you guys probably thought I was just making up some storyline after game one when I said we didn't play well. We didn't play well. And tonight, you know, that the starting li lineup to start the game is 10 to 2 Miami. Start the third quarter. They scored 11 points in two minutes and 10 seconds. Um, and we just got, you know, we had guys out there that were just, whether feeling sorry for themselves for not making shots or thinking they can just turn it on or off. Um, this is not the preseason. This is not the regular season. It's not round. This is the NBA Finals. And that to me is really, really perplexing, disappointing. And I asked the team, I asked that player, you guys tell me why we lost. And they knew the answer. Miami came in here and outworked us. And we were by far our least disciplined game of these 16 or 17 playoff games, whatever it is now. So many breakdowns. And they exploited every one of those breakdowns and scored. So um, if we're going to try to go down there and regain control of this series and get home court advantage back, we're going to have to outwork Miami, which we didn't do tonight, and our discipline is going to have to be off the charts. I love when a coach is perplexed. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite. Just can't come up with the words, yep. but I'm going to give you a whole lot of words. But I'm also perplexed by the lack of effort. I mean, you have to. You're going on the road. You're going into an environment that's going to be so hot, literally, and ready to welcome this Heat team back. Do you think, has your, has your take on the series shifted based on last night's Heat win? Or do you think the Nuggets do get it together and come back looking like the superior team that we assume that they are on paper? Uh, yeah, I think that it has shifted between game one and game two for sure. I mean, we got a series now. I, I think that, uh, again, we've talked about how battle-tested this Miami team is in these playoffs. Um, I think I could totally see it going six or seven games now. And I know, like, the popular consensus was probably, you know, Nuggets in five. Like, they're that just – oh, Yeah, they're overwhelming, right? And, and they, they still might be overwhelming, though. Like, we, you know, they could – I could see them easily making this – still a short series but I think this Miami team is so resilient that yeah I think it's going to go six or seven for sure like when the Miami Heat get mean mugging from Duncan Robinson what are you supposed to do right like it's Duncan Robinson and I'm all for it I'm very impressed by his play. 10 points in the fourth quarter he's getting to the rim at ease some yeah. way somehow it's not just him operating as a three-point specialist either yeah i'm proud of him i hope that they can uh you know maybe this will replace the jimmy neutron meme no uh, of, no. No, no is no, that no. always going to be him it, it that's going to follow he him he is jimmy neutron i thought jimmy it was neutron a solid mean mugging i thought it was a solid mean mug like i, I thought you know he, he looked uh somewhat intimidating for for duncan robinson so yeah it was good on him I, I hope that that replaces the Jimmy Neutron uh, meme for some people. Not I. Not you. Okay. Someone in the chat, Reddick, said that Eric Spolstra's doppelganger is Ray Romano. And I've never really seen it, and now I can't unsee it. That's a pretty good one. Everybody loves Ray. That's a pretty good one, actually. Everybody. I like that. Spolstra's Respects probably a little bit Spo. younger than Ray Romano. Okay, though. like Ray Romano is That's a little disrespectful peak. to him. Well, Duncan Robinson is a little older than Jimmy Neutron. That's true, too. <laughs> can still That's make that cross-generational reference. I just think that Duncan Robinson is one of the top five funniest, like, put some attitude on it players in the league. Like, mm -hmm. I would love for Luke Kennard. I would love for Luke Kennard to embrace those uh -huh. kind of facial expressions yes, in the midst of one of those runs. Like, Luke, Luke, when Luke had the huge game against the yes. Rockets, like, you were just getting, like, the, hey. He's, like, the king of the shrug yeah, emoji. Right. And, like, I think you could put a little spice on it. Like, just a yeah. little sprinkle. Not too much. And I loved it because Duncan Robinson, I was listening, I think he was on the Old Man and the Three podcast with J.J. Redick, and he was talking about in the Celtics game when he was able to do his mean mug in that one. And he said, you know, I really wish that it had come in a moment where I had made like seven threes in a row and like doing my thing. Mm -hmm. But I just got to the rim and, you know, laid it in. And that was my moment and yeah. I had to do it. And so now I think he's really embraced it. It doesn't have to be fireball three shooting from Duncan Robinson. He's just doing what he needs to do to help his team go out there and win a game. And if he plays like that, I ultimately think it'll come down to how the Heat operate as a three-point shooting team. They made 17 threes last night. When the shots go in, especially from those role players, the Miami Heat, have a much better yeah. opportunity. I mean, no duh. Like when Max Struess isn't going 0 of 9 from the three-point line and instead is making four threes in the first quarter, guess what? The Heat are able to hang a little bit right. tougher. I really thought the Nuggets were going to go into their home arena, into ball arena, in Denver. 
I thought they were going to win by 15. I said it last oh, night. I, did I too. said it yesterday. Uh, yeah, I did with, too. And I even said it a little bit with my chest. And when they were up 15, I was like, ha-ha. Yeah. And then everything devolved in the fourth quarter as it did. I will say Cody Zeller should never try to guard Nikola Jokic in his life. Yeah, I mean, I think that... It's a tough scene. Yeah, it is, it's brutal. That's brutal to watch. You know, I saw someone mention in the chat, too, like, you know, you look at... Because, uh, of course, like, Cody Zeller, that's a tough assignment for him. And they're the Heat are going to win this series by Bam Adebayo being awesome defensively against Jokic. But, yeah. and this person said, Jokic has got to guard Bam, too. Like, Bam Adebayo had a great game offensively last night. Um, he's got, you know, some stuff in his bag. And... Uh, that's something that he could definitely exploit. The oh, rest of absolutely. The yeah. Even Jokic was asked about his defense at the media availability going into game two, and he kind of schluffed it off and was like, I think I need to get a trophy, my friend. I'm joking. I'm joking. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, that's a, that's a serious part of this. And will that defense that has been better in the postseason, will it travel now? to Miami. Did you see Desmond Bain was at the game I yesterday did see that. in How about Denver? That? Rocking the Mile High City like trip that. for Desmond Bain. I like it. Drinking in mm -hmm. the vibe. This is what it's like. Feeling yep. like perhaps one day, hopefully sooner than later, in Memphis, Tennessee, we too will be hosting our first NBA Finals action. Yes. I love to see Desmond Bain there. And I do get sucked in regularly. I asked Rob Fisher about this last week. Like, can you watch the NBA postseason once the Grizzlies are out without thinking about the Grizzlies. And he said that he does. I'm constantly relating everything to the Grizzlies. Like Kevin Love getting put back in the starting lineup, that's a piece of heat culture. And I will take the smallest of crumbs of heat culture being evident with the Memphis Grizzlies. I thought to myself, man, kind of reminds me of when Xavier Tillman went out there and had that yeah. hell of a game against the Lakers. Being ready, staying ready, accepting a role. There was a great piece in The Athletic about Kevin Love being a positive force within the locker room, but also accepting when he is in and out of a starting lineup. And then to see him get reinserted in there, the Heat start off on a 10-2 run. Suddenly Aaron Gordon's big bad boy size doesn't have the same effect that it had in game one. And I'm just sitting there like, the Grizzlies have a little bit of that in them. And I Absolutely. know talking about culture right now, it's like maybe – don't say that on the national shows at the moment because I don't want to get taken down because there were some we wildly yeah. horrible takes all weekend, yeah. especially on Friday. It died down a little bit as the weekend continued, but John Morant did continue to be a massive piece of the NBA conversation. I agree. It was very cringe at times. So cringe. Yeah. Some of the takes so bad. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that with Gary Parrish a little bit later. He'll join us in about like roughly 13 minutes we'll take a break here when we come back on the other side we will hit the hot mess express some messy stories from the weekend including terrell davis broncos legend was at the game last night he did not appear to be having a very fun time we got some baseball on the show a crazy wild ending to a white Sox game over the weekend and gp still ahead Derek dillon memphis showboats wide receiver going to join us around nine o'clock that's all still ahead when we come back Breathing easy requires good lung health. However, there are signs your lungs may not be healthy. A persistent cough may be a warning sign of lung disease, such as COPD, asthma, post-COVID lungs, or cancer. Other symptoms to look out for include feeling short of breath, wheezing, losing weight, coughing up blood, or chest pain. Don't ignore or dismiss these symptoms. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialists at 901-276-2662 to schedule your lung health screening. It's a matter of life and breath. Sonic has something delicious for you. Hey, announcer guy, that's your cue. Try the new Super Sonic Double Stack Cheeseburger. Two juicy pure seasoned beef patties and two types of cheddar cheese topped with grilled onions, crinkle cut pickles, creamy mayo, and classic mustard on a toasted brioche bun. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely craving that previously mentioned thing. Super Sonic Double Stack Cheeseburger. Mmm, Sonic. Limited time only of participating Sonic drive-ins. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com.
Hey ladies, it's your girl Big Sue. Let's have some real talk about these fibroids and how they're causing you to miss out on life events. Doubling up on your products when you do leave the house, only to keep running to the bathroom because of the bladder pressure. Or maybe you're dealing with pelvic pain so intense it nearly takes your breath away. Be present and win your life back with the fibroid team at VIP. Proud sponsors of the Memphis Grizzlies. Call 901-747-1007. That's 901-747-1007. Or online at VIP Fibroid. Com. No matter what time of year it is, there's always something exciting happening at FedEx Forum in Memphis. And when you want tickets to the hottest concerts, sporting events, and more, you can find them at Ticketmaster. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, Ticketmaster has a wide selection of tickets available for all the events you can't miss. Check out what's happening at FedEx Forum and get tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Memphis. The Grizzlies' official partner. Take five oil changes faster than you think. There's no appointment needed. There isn't even a waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take five oil changes so fast you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. And remember, at Take Five, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. That means you won't even have time to show off your perfect jump shot or your killer crossover. Take Five, the stay in your car 10-minute oil change. I mean, if you like crisp nacho fries covered in bold Mexican spices, then you have to try Steak Chili Verde Fries. They're like nacho fries, but with grilled steak topped with spicy verde sauce with kicks of jalapeno and lime. They're basically the younger brother of nacho fries, who's better looking, smarter, makes more money. But nacho fries has like 53 more followers, so it evens out. Steak Chili Verde Fries are here. Get them today, only at Taco Bell. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation which vary. Chugga, 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 All aboard! The Hot Mess Express! Chugga, 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 chugga. Terrell Davis, Broncos legend, multi-Super Bowl champion, the Mile High Salute Forever was there supporting the Denver Nuggets last night. And not only did the Denver Nuggets lose, no, no, Terrell Davis had an absolute miserable time at the game. I don't want to speak for him. He might have had a great time. He might have just been photographed in moments of desperation because Terrell Davis experienced what many of us have experienced at one point in our life, obnoxious fans of the other team. That is Terrell Davis looking almost asleep in a pink sweatshirt surrounded by Miami Heat fans who were going on and on and on the entire game. Do you think that those Miami Heat fans realized and recognized who they were high-fiving around, Bennett? No. Me neither. Clearly not. <laughs> Clearly not. Um, I don't want to assume. If but... you're Terrell Davis, like, I, I think maybe, like, I'd want to be in a suite or something. He wants to be amongst the people. He wants to be amongst the people. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. He wants to be Ariel from The Little Mermaid. He wants to be in the energy. I'm saying, sweets are great for food and beverage. Yep. But if you want to actually feel the intensity that's true. of Denver hosting an NBA Finals for the first time, I can respect that was, Terrell Davis wanting to be amongst the action. That was very elitist of me. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. You watch all your games from the Sweet No, Bennett. I don't. Only Sweet 216 uh, back during the COVID year. If yeah. you know, you know. Uh -huh. Grizzlies fans, Sweet 216 forever and always. I think... I'm trying to remember where Peyton Manning was sitting while he was, of course, and Russell Wilson was at the game. I'm not sure they were... Because it looks like he's kind of like buried within yeah. fans. It's not like he's in a, a courtside seat. You could say he could have a courtside just in one of yeah. the chairs. By the way, does Peyton claim the Nuggets? I thought he was with us. Bennett, I don't want to speak ill Peyton of a man was a lot that of I respect Wasn't he and a, love. He was at multi-Grizzlies games this year. I definitely saw him at one. Is Peyton Manning Drake? Is he a fan hopper? I don't want... I, it's a fair question. I love Peyton Manning with all my heart for his contributions yep. to bringing the Denver Nuggets another Super Bowl. And by contributions, I mean not getting sacked and just handing the ball <laughs> off and finding some short yep. little slant That's passes right. along the way. But he will forever be respected by the city of Denver. I have seen him at our games, too. Yep. Pick say. a side. Pick a pick, side, Peyton. Pick your side. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have a million sides, so I can't say that. That's I'm like true. the worst That's person right. in yeah. the world yeah. when it comes you're, to you're having the Peyton Manning a million of different media. teams. That's right. But I do hope that Terrell Davis is uh, resting and recovering after having to be inundated by annoying fans last night. Another big story out of the NBA. 
big fashion story with Bennett Doyle. LaMelo Ball has a new watch, and people have some thoughts about it. This was revealed by Zoe Frost, a custom jeweler based out of Houston, made specially for LaMelo Ball, who is always fashion forward, like not afraid to take some risks. This is a risk. A lot of people saying it looks like a Bowser watch. That's what I was Something that say. would be uncovered That'll... in Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. It also looks like it could be treasure discovered in the bottom of Bikini Bottoms. Well, Bowser would make sense since Super Mario Brothers is really top of mind right now. Mm -hmm. That's that's the first thing that I thought because the the theme seems all over the place. There's you got a little like uh, yeah some <laughs> some multicolor like mini watches in there and obviously the spikes. Um, yeah, I mean it's 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 fine. It's a it's, it's not a the worst look I've ever just seen. Just because you can buy something doesn't mean, doesn't you, mean should. you should. Just because something is expensive doesn't mean it's great. But in the case of LaMelo Ball, it was just a lot. I would love to know what the exact cost of this watch was. Also, as somebody who even with just like a simple wedding ring, it gets caught on things all the time, mm -hmm. or I smash it on a, on a table and I'm constantly afraid, like, is this going to be the diamond break that breaks? It. Are we going to learn it's not a real diamond? I don't know. But that watch feels as if it would get caught on your clothes. Mm -hmm. It would get... I don't know. You're so rich. You yeah, if don't you lose one of those little spikes, it. you're screwed. Don't wear a sweater with it. Yeah, It'll right. pull all over the place. Right. Tough scene. Crazy ending to the White Sox game over the weekend. White Sox, Tigers, they were in the bottom of the 10th inning. Bases loaded for Chicago. Jose Cisnero was one out away from forcing another extra inning. And instead did that. He hits the ump in the face. The ball was lost. No one can find it. It is a walk-off win Oof. for the White Sox. An absolutely brutal way to end a baseball game. In case you were wondering, rule 601 of the MLB rulebook explicitly rules that a ball that hits an umpire is a live ball. So the White Sox go on to win every single run in this game. There were only three of them. But every run was scored on a wild pitch. All three. And that's the wildest. That ump is definitely concussed. He's 100% They did concussed, offer their, yeah. their thoughts in his recovery <laughs> and hoping that he will be all right. I mean, that's a, do you ever ump again? You have to. Yeah. It's your job. That's your job. But that's a painful one to go down by. Yeah. The White Sox have had some really weird walk-offs all season. They've also been a team that lost two walk-off bunts this season. Like, who loses to a walk-off bunt, period? But to do it twice, they are the only team. And now they have finally won based on their own version of wildness. So thrilled for the White Sox, thrilled to have another reason to talk about the Barbie movie because you know that it's all that I care about and it's all that I consume. And until the Barbie movie comes out on July 21st, can't wait. we will find a way to constantly talk about it. Two Barbie stories. Okay. One, did you see that the Barbie movie is responsible for the world running out of pink paint? I heard about this, right? Because they use so much for the set pieces. All the pink. Yeah, yeah. The Barbie dream house is pink. The slide going into the pool is pink. All of the accessories are pink. The shower is pink. The bath is pink. The mirror is pink. Everything is pink in the Barbie movie. You know, and it makes sense too, because if you think about it, like, how much pink paint are we using? Like, you know, on a daily basis in the world. If I, if First grader Jesse, who wanted her bedroom redone with Beanie Babies and pink yeah. paint, I'd be devastated if someone came to me and said, actually, there's currently a pink paint shortage going on and you can't have it. Do they not know that you can mix red and white? Like, did they miss that? I thought about that Color too. scheming of art class where they teach you how to, if you have limited supplies, you can make something else. My only thing there, perhaps it's not the right shade of pink. Like it has to be a very specific mm -hmm. bright pink, but this was all revealed in an Architectural Digest interview with Greta Gerwig, head of the Barbie movie movie. That's Barbie movie story one. Barbie adjacent news, Tom Cruise is so mad. Tom Cruise is fuming internally, reportedly, hypothetically, because his new Mission Impossible movie, Dead Reckoning Part One, comes out like 13 days after the Barbie movie, and mm -hmm. more importantly in this case, Oppenheimer, which Oppenheimer was essentially made for IMAX. Like, all that That's Christopher right. Nolan has done. He's the king of IMAX. Yeah, what he they is... say, miles and miles worth of film yes. from this movie, yeah. I can see the miles worth of film from here. And if you're yeah. going to see Oppenheimer, you're going to see it in IMAX. So once it comes out, it's going to steal a bunch of the IMAX theaters. And only a third of movie theaters in this country are IMAX. And so Oppenheimer's obviously going to get a fair number of them, which will bump Mission Impossible out of IMAX. Mission Impossible is relying on their film to generate a lot of money from IMAX. Tom Cruise, I don't know if you remember, saved movies. That's right. Single-handedly saved movies yes. with Top Gun. And of the billions of dollars that Top Gun made, like a fair number, over 100 million of their ultimate 
uh, gross income came from IMAX theaters. So Tom Cruise is like, yo, you all owe me a solid. The whole reason anyone's coming to see any summer blockbusters, period, is because of moi, Tom mm -hmm. Cruise. He's such an ass. I don't think he's going to win. No, I don't either. I mean, this uh, Oppenheimer is being billed, like you said, as an IMAX movie. Like, this is supposed to be seen in IMAX. Mission Impossible, I, I understand the argument because it's an action movie, but, like, nobody's thinking of that as, oh, you have to see an IMAX. Like, I Oppenheimer, you Cruise, have to see an IMAX. Tom Cruise is just mad that Mission Impossible is not being linked with the Barbie movie. Like, Oppenheimer. Oh, he wants that double and feature. Barbie, that's the double feature to uh -huh. go to. I found out we're now being referred to as. And I say we because I'm a part of this crew. Barbieheimers. Yeah. A little I like Barbie, that. A little Oppenheimer. Rolls off the tongue. A little salty, a little sweet. Mm -hmm. You bring it all together, you have your double feature. And Tom Cruise is just mad that we're not Mission Impossible Arby's. That sounds absolutely bizarre. Yeah. But uh, sorry, Tom it doesn't Cruise. Work as much. I'm going to go see Barbie and Oppenheimer in IMAX. That's a lot of money. The movies aren't dead, by the way. The movie theater was absolutely packed for The Little Mermaid over the weekend. Oh, which it was? was? great to see. Oh, packed. Had to wait like 10 minutes for concessions. Yeah. And we forgot a water, so we had to wait and to pay too back. much money yeah. for a water. So. Now, I mean, listen, the Mission Impossible movies are super popular, so like, I, I, get, I mean, if... Boo! No! Just, <laughs> just postpone your release date, dude. Hey, if they you're, already have... That, hey, okay. if you're the king of the movies, that you can do whatever you want, all right? specific thing. It's been postponed like four times Listen, because of COVID. If you're Tom Cruise and you saved movies, then make a few phone calls. Get this thing pushed a little bit further away from <laughs> Oppenheimer and Barbie. Because we're doing so many comparisons and movie references on yeah. this Monday, Tom Cruise is the Lord Farquaad of the movies. Yes. Like, and I don't just say that because he's short but it does contribute to that factor. All right, we got to take a quick break. Gary Parrish is going to join us cool. on the other side. We will get his take on all the John Morant-related conversations, even though there was no actual news on John Morant from over the weekend, what he thinks in regards to the NBA Finals being tied at one apiece. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. And much like the Grizzlies have recruited legendary talent, we want you to be part of our team. Are you ready to be part of something legendary? Then visit www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Get your Mardi Gras beads ready. Fat Tuesday Memphis is now open. The world's most famous daiquiri bar is opening on Main Street and will be the official pregame party destination for your Memphis Grizzlies. Try the famous Fat Tuesday 190 Octane, Cat 5 Hurricane, or Miami Vice, or create your own signature drink with 12 delicious flavors to choose from. Grab your friends and book your next birthday party or girls' night out at the new Fat Tuesday Memphis, located at 8 South Main Street, where we get the party started. Memphis fans can now enhance each moment of their day with the refreshingly luxurious taste of Cintron sparkling flavored energy beverages served exclusively at FedEx Forum. Cintron World is a lifestyle beverage brand inspiring everyone to create their lives with intention, energy, and style. As the official partner of the Grizzlies, Cintron is offering a 10% discount on your next online order when you use promo code GRIZZLIES10 at CintronWorld.com and follow the lifestyle on social at Cintron World. Drink it, live it. Sauced by Will Smith is taking their championship taste to FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. Sonic has something delicious for you. Hey, announcer guy, that's your cue. Try the new Super Sonic Double Stack Cheeseburger. Two juicy pure seasoned beef patties and two types of cheddar cheese topped with grilled onions, crinkle cut pickles, creamy mayo, and classic mustard on a toasted brioche bun. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely craving that previously mentioned thing. Super Sonic Double Stack Cheeseburger. Mmm, 
Sonic. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Memphis. The Grizzlies' official partner. Take five oil changes faster than you think. There's no appointment needed. There isn't even a waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take five oil changes so fast you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. And remember, at Take Five, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. That means you won't even have time to show off your perfect jump shot or your killer crossover. Take Five, the stay in your car 10 minute oil change. No matter what time of year it is, there's always something exciting happening at FedEx Forum in Memphis. And when you want tickets to the hottest concerts, sporting events, and more, you can find them at Ticketmaster. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, Ticketmaster has a wide selection of tickets available for all the events you can't miss. Check out what's happening at FedEx Forum and get tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. of the Gary Parish Show, Grind City Media, weekday mornings at 10 a.m. He joins us every Monday. You're waving big. I like to wave. I, wave, I like to wave at people. Are you a fan of the wave at games? No. Oh, thank God. I don't like um, having to pay attention to what's happening in a crowd yeah. and then stand up at the uh, determined time. A very Simon Says element. Like, yeah, I don't I'm need just to be told. To, like, you know, this is my seat. I can sit in it if I want. I can stand up if I want, but I don't need to be uh, peer pressured by 40,000 people. So now I'm anti-wave. Anti-wave in a crowd, but very pro-wave just in, in terms of just doing stuff like this. I just sort of like doing that. Well, I don't know what to do with my hands hey, either, go, so yeah, I'll yeah, just wave all morning. Yeah. We survived our first secessionless Sunday. Yeah. How did it feel? I was fine. Um, I, I, I was fine. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I got through it. I was Congrats, fine. Congrats, you're here. Yeah, like Sunday nights are, are pretty good. Like uh, the, my middle guy had some of his friends come over, and so we having a little late afternoon, early evening pool party in the back. So I monitored that and uh, watched some baseball, watched some basketball. Tried to start watching The Idol after basketball was over last night. You did. I fell you asleep. You attempted. I attempted. I will, I will watch it. I'm going to give it a shot. But the, the, rate, the reviews are terrible. So awful. awful. I feel like it's going to be a hate watch. And especially coming off of Secession right. and Barry and having that big Sunday night slate. I'm just grateful The Righteous Gemstones comes back soon. Do you Love. participate? Yeah. Hilarious. Fantastic. Hilarious. I'm going to try out The Idol as well. I'm yeah. watching a show called Mer People right now, which mm. I will save my... You should watch it. It's a documentary on Netflix. Four-parter. Okay. People are mermaids. There are mermaids walking amongst us. And then they swim in their spare time. Kid you not. Do you believe that? You have... Yes. You believe there's mermaids walking... Gary, they have conventions. The mermaid conventions. Mermaid conventions. They have the biggest convention that they've ever had, according to mer people. What was the movie about the mermaid back in the 80s? Splash? Oh, yes. Splash, Splash okay, yeah. is a good one. Um, the Longest Year is a DCOM classic, uh -huh. a Disney Channel original movie that oftentimes gets eliminated from contention because it was weird. So you're being serious. You genuinely no, believe serious. that there are mermaids walking apart. What do they use oh, to walk no, with? No, 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 no. Let me be clear. I don't think they're really mermaids. Okay, they are okay. people who want to live as mermaids, and they find jobs that allow themselves to function as a working mermaid. Yeah, that's called mental illness. No, 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 no. Okay, no, 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 no. I'm trying this new thing, and this show is testing me. Mm -hmm. My new goal in life is when I see something that would normally make me say, wow, that's really weird. Mm -hmm. Now I look at it and I say, wow. That's so great that it makes that person happy. That's so great that it brings them joy. Mer people has tested me in ways. This is like throwing myself into the deep end of the pool, for lack of a better metaphor. Sure. But I am, I am drowning trying to look at these people. And you know what? You find yourself rooting for them. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, mer people, mer people. Harder. Yeah, I listen. Um, it has no impact on my life. I don't care whatsoever. But I don't look at the. If so, if if my cousin came to me, for instance, and said, "Hey." Uh, GP, I know we haven't talked in a while, but I just wanted to catch you up. I'm now living a mermaid lifestyle. I would say, I, asked Chris. I would say that's bananas. You realize that's crazy, right? I asked Chris if I came home and said, "Hey, I'm I'm interested in doing a career switch. I would like to start professionally pursuing my life as a mermaid. Yeah. Would you still love me? Yeah, yeah, that's was a wild thing <laughs> to say to somebody. Go, you're never gonna do that. Don't give me that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that, never gonna yeah, happen. Yeah, that's a, that's actually great relationship advice. Don't play hypotheticals. Right. <laughs> that you don't have to. You never know when one hits. That's just the wrong <laughs> answer. No, I I, I remember a story that involved one of my friends and his wife asked him. If you could sleep with any of my friends. Oh, no, no, no. That's the worst <laughs> question. Don't ever. 
never do that. <laughs> if you could ever. see with any of my friends which one, and he had the answer immediately. He was like, oh, I'm just making up a name. He was uh-huh. like, oh, Jessica. And he, she was like, excuse me? She was like, I mean, I, I guess I get that, but like, whoa. I didn't like that answer was really quick. Are they like, still together? I believe, yeah, okay. they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't a tanker. But no, but I, that's in the back. Every time you're around Jessica now, I bet you that's in the back of it, somebody's head. It might have been a couch sleeper right. for a couple weeks. Yeah, it was or just so. one. It, it create, um, it can create. Like, you ever watch Eyes Wide Shut? No, but I know the concept. Okay, yeah. So I love that movie. It's very. Uh, wildly different opinions. Some people right. hated it because it seemed pointless and all over the place. I personally loved it. But it's like all rooted in insecurities. Yes. Like at some point, they're just getting high in the bedroom, yes. husband and wife talking, and she says, you know, this, you know, I never cheated, but there was this one time where I was thinking about it and I was about to. Do you remember this guy? We were at this restaurant and I and it like creates all these insecurities in their marriage and in his head and it spirals into all this stuff and that was just to get... Everybody doesn't need to know everything that's bouncing around in your head all the time. In the weirdest of questions, have you ever known someone who's gone to an Eyes Wide Shut party? No. They're real. Just like mermaids are real? <laughs> yes. Mermaids what if you got real. dressed up as a mermaid and went to an Eyes Wide Shut Honestly, party? Honestly, feels wouldn't like that a crossover something? that wouldn't be that weird. Yeah, like I feel like you probably would bump into a mermaid. Yeah. It's possible at an Eyes Wide Shut. So um, I am going to watch The Idol. I think that's okay. what we were talking about. Sure. Um, you have a new Sunday night show. But at least as of last night, you also had the NBA Finals. We had the NBA Finals. certainly helpful for sure. at least the foreseeable future. And now that series has at least been extended out of sweep territory. Yes. And uh, listen, Denver's still the favorite. I think that's debatable given that we're now in a best of five and Miami has home court advantage and Miami has been proving people wrong this entire playoffs. Like at some point you've got to stop thinking about this is the eighth seed and start thinking about this is a team that has eliminated Milwaukee, eliminated Boston, that's now the first team this entire postseason to win in Denver, that's won ten times this postseason as an underdog, which is a uh, the most by any team in the playoffs in 30 years. Like that. At some point, you have to set aside what you thought about this team and just sort of recognize what's been going on the past few weeks. And uh, so Denver, I, I say all that to say Denver is still the favorite, but I'm not certain that they should be. I, I think I would still take Denver to win mm-hmm. the series, but it obviously got a lot more interesting last night because Miami, which is something we talk about all the time, from game one to game two made real adjustments, both in lineups and approach. And it I don't want to say it flipped the series, but it certainly changed the dynamics of that game, and they won it. And now all you got to do is win three more. Like all you got to do, you've got to win three more. But if you win three more, you're the unlikeliest NBA champion in history. I think that's a reasonable thing to say. It's a cliche for a reason. It's not a series until the home team loses. Sure. And so, we have ourselves a series. Right. And it is one of the reasons why people and many NBA experts are taking nuggets in four, nuggets in five, but there's always a caveat. Right. I feel like every single person who said it said, eh, but you just don't know about this Miami Heat team. You can never count out this Miami Heat team. There is an unquantifiable, Jimmy Butler last night called it the don't give a damn right. factor. It could be simply seen as the don't count them out factor, or whatever it may be. There's that little extra oomph within the Miami Heat where mathematically, statistically, they should not be in the position that they are. And yet here they are. But I I think the main thing is they believe they should be here. Oh, 100%. Gabe Vincent believes he should be here. That's right. Duncan Robinson believes he should be here. None of us do, uh, or none of us did. Like, I'd I'd, I'd be shocked if you could find one person before the playoffs started that picked the Miami Heat to win the Eastern Conference, right? To pick the Miami Heat to be tied 1-1 in the NBA Finals. Right. So nobody else thought this was, I guess we all, anything's possible, but it's certainly not likely. And yet, I bet they believed it from the jump. Hey, we had a whatever regular season, but who cares? Now let's turn it on. We've got a superstar in Jimmy Butler. We got the best coach in the NBA. Uh, that's a pretty good place to start. And you know, I, I do think, you know, sort of the Eric Spolster stuff. I don't want to say it's gotten overblown, but it's become a daily like Eric Spolster is the best coach. How many times during a season did somebody say Eric Spolster is the best coach in the NBA relative to how many times it's been right. said over the past month? You know, that's. But it doesn't mean it's not true. And I thought what he did last night was, it, with his staff, it's never just one guy, but inserting Kevin Love into the lineup, getting bigger, you know, it was a big, a big problem in game one that they were small. And uh, you know, people uh, assumed that might be an issue for them. And so rather than keep trying to just figure it out with the same starting lineup, okay, let's get bigger and see what that does. And Spo, I don't know if you saw this with Ramona Shelburne last yeah, night. Yeah, we played it earlier in yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't love that. I didn't either because she had a point and it it is a 
topic worth discussing yeah. for anybody who watched game two and understands Nikola Jokic as a triple double machine is Nikola Jokic at a level that is, right. is very difficult to solve. And if you take away one of those things, especially as a passer with this Nuggets group, it significantly changes his output. And it's and like, listen, Jokic took 13 more shots than anyone else on his team and 16 more shots than he took in game one. He had 14 assists in game one, only four in game two. That is not something that just happened. Right. That is something that was caused by. Methodical. That's ab Miami decided to yes. do that. And Ramona, I thought it was it, maybe a simple question, but still he knew the point she was trying mm -hmm. to make. And it's a solid point. I'm not a big fan of coaches or players making media members feel uncomfortable uh, just feel stupid <laughs> like i bet ramona like i've known ramona forever and I, I bet like she's so established i don't really she could probably roll That's off what of we her said earlier she's like it doesn't affect her but watching a, it doesn't make you it gives a bit of an ick yes i didn't like that there was a time um it was in a rick patino press conference and it's when he was at louisville and it, th th what happened last night reminded me of of this this person um you know, it was like raise his hands like a conference tournament or something. And they said, uh, Coach Patino, I, I, you use zone a lot in the second half. And I just was curious, what made you go to that? And at that point, Rick Patino, you could almost see it on his face. Like, I, how do I handle this? And Rick said, you know, because here's the truth, they didn't play zone at all. All right? The person just asked. The, it, yeah. it, it'd be like if a team ran the ball every possession in football and after the game, your coach said, so why'd you throw it so much in the second half? It's like, <laughs> we didn't throw it at all. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So, Rick, you can sort of see it. He goes, um. Well, you know, one of the interesting things about our man-to-man -man defense is that sometimes it does kind of look like a zone. Yeah. And so I can see why you might think that. But the truth is we didn't really play zone in the second half. But, but I, I, I know what you're picking up on. He tried to make the person mm -hmm. feel not dumb in that moment. And I always, like, Rick's done a million other things that has drawn criticism right. throughout his life, professionally, personally. But, like, I thought, I thought that was a sweet moment. Like, you, you have the power to make this person feel stupid or not, and you chose not to. I, I like that. Spo last night took the opposite approach. Like he wanted to be dismissive of the question. And perhaps, certainly it's more complicated than we're going to turn Jokic into a shooter, not a mm -hmm. passer. Like it's more complicated than that. But that is what they did. They, they stopped running a, a, a second person at him. Because uh, when you run somebody else at him to get the ball out of his hands, then he's going to get the ball out of his hands. And he's such a gifted passer at that height I mean, he's, he's one of, if not the greatest passer at that height that we've ever seen. So he can see everything. And now you've got three guys trying to guard four, and he'll find that. Or he'll find the one guy who can swing it to the other guy, and they'll just eat you up. So what Miami decided last night quite clearly is we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll stunt, but we're not going. And we're going to make him score one-on-one. -on -one. And he can do it. I mean, he'll eat on some of these guys. But I saw this stat this morning. In Denver's losses in this postseason, he's averaging 41 points. So that's clearly the, the way to approach them is try to make tr let him go big, but try to contain everybody else, uh, make him more of a, of a shot taker than a passer, make him more of a point scorer than you know, a guy who tallies double-digit assist and, and live with the results. Now it'll be interesting to see what Mike Malone does to counter that, but – it is undeniable that Miami changed approach into game two, and it led to that unusual box score. And that's where you're going to have to get those adjustments from Michael Malone, and I care a hell of a lot less about if he took a timeout or not. Yeah, but, <laughs> now, but, I, but I do think that's fair. Yeah, um, well, every other coach who hasn't, I mean, we gave Joe Mazzulla a whole lot of hell for keeping timeouts in his back pocket as yeah, well. Yeah, but like this, I, it, it's debatable. And that's what if people, Jamal Murray had made the shot, then nobody would say We're praising as a hero. That's right. And he got a good look. It was a good look, a still low percentage three, but it's a shot he can right. make. He just didn't make it. But you're right. If he makes it, it's like Jamal Murray just made the biggest shot of the playoffs, and now mm -hmm. we're headed to overtime. It's debatable, which is why everybody's debating it. I think when you you got to take a three, there's no other options, and you don't have an advantage in transition, because they didn't. It was like, you know, uh, the ball's coming up the court, and – the other nine guys are in front of you. you. There's no advantage in transition. There's like 12 seconds when you start your possession. They don't even get into the action with, until about six seconds yeah. left. So you, you lose half the clock just getting the ball up the court. And then it allowed Jimmy Butler, he recognized really quickly Jokic is going to set the screen. 
So he just comes with Jokic. So now you've created this situation, or Miami created it for you, but you didn't call the timeout to try to get away from it, where you're going to run a possession where Jimmy Butler gets switched on to Jamal Murray. Like, that's not what you want. Like, under normal circumstances, you want, let's just say Kevin Love's in the game. Then you bring Jokic out. Kevin Love gets switched on to Jamal Murray, and now, now we're playing. But you don't want Jimmy Butler. He's quicker. He's, I mean, I don't know if he's quicker, but he's taller. He's athletic. He's going he's gonna to be able to Spicier. contest. He's, he's going to fight <laughs> For lack you. Of a better word. Yeah, so yeah. I just think, and again, it's debatable, but I would have liked, if that were my coach, caught a timeout, sight out of bounds, 12 seconds to go. Now let's draw up multiple options to try to get, to try to create a sh- open three for somebody as opposed to try to let Jamal Murray create one for himself. You're right. If it would have worked, it'd just shut up. We'd have right. never said a word, but it didn't work. And when things don't work and you don't attack them properly, then that is when you open yourself up to criticism. Exactly. I love that we spent this segment talking about mermaids mm-hmm. and talking about the actual NBA basketball game that was played last night. Adam Silver would be so proud. Adam Silver would say, told y'all, <laughs> we're not going to talk about John Morant until the end of the playoffs. Before I let you go, yeah. though, I did want to get your take on, on the one update that we got on Friday, which was the Associated Press's report that, according to Adam Silver, John Morant not being charged with a crime does not necessarily prevent the NBA from handing down more discipline. That was just a specific that was added sure. through the AP's reporting. And then also seeing the variety of really cringeworthy, horrible takes that popped off from Friday throughout the weekend. Where did you sit in all of it? And were you surprised, per se, that it wasn't leaked over the weekend? Uh, not surprised it, it hasn't been leaked, but I won't be surprised if it does get leaked because I think at this point, I, I believe, I don't know, but I believe uh, there's more than this many people who know what... Once you hit double digits, it's real hard to keep a secret. Right. I mean, once you hit two, it can be hard <laughs> to keep a secret. But certainly, I, I think there's enough people who know th- the, where it, it's very reasonable to assume it might get leaked. As for all of the takes, I, I guess first the AP thing, I, I just always sort of, perhaps assumes the right word, but just sort mm-hmm. of always understood that he can be punished even though this is not a crime. Like, I, I think that's been established for, for a while. Um, as for, like, what's best for Ja, you know, Ja, Ja's issues, I don't think really have anything to do with Memphis as much as they have to do with um, lifestyle choices he's making, um, perhaps the people he's surrounding himself with. But best I can tell, um, you know, and I'm not in these circles, mm-hmm. but I, I, I don't believe he's uh, surrounding himself with a bunch of Memphians who he met over the past couple of years. It seems to be a lot of his boys from South Carolina who would be with him, whether he's in Memphis or Boston or Salt Lake City or L.A. or anywhere, or at least would have been with him while all these things were going down. I don't know the status of any of those relationships now. So, li- listen, th- this whatever issues Ja um, is dealing with, I don't think they're caused by where he plays basketball or where he lives. Um, it's a very easy thing to say from a distance, but you know, I, I, I I'm trying to think. I, do I even do we even remember what what organization was Gilbert Arenas and Javaris Crittenden in when that? What city exactly. were they in? I don't even. I don't know. Yeah, I don't even remember. I, I want to say Washington, but I, I'm not certain. Be my first guess. Yeah, I'm not certain. My point is, it, it, it had nothing to do with that. Those my, were just yes. those were just two people who were dealing with the things yes. that they were dealing with. And similarly, this is just Jod dealing with the whatever he's dealing with. Um, now, like I've, so, I've speculated on it so much. Oh. I, 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 you know, I, I it, went to a dermatology appointment, and we do have to wrap up because the yeah, wonderful Derek Dillon from the Memphis Showboats is going to join us, and we'll get to him very shortly. Went to a dermatology appointment. Love great dermatologist. Yeah. Wonderful. Highly recommend. But what did he talk about the entire appointment? John Morant. Yeah. And speculation. I mean, and so, a, an appointment that he had earlier in the day, another one of his patients was speculating on a different side of right. things. Like, it's like I played wild. golf on yes. Saturday with somebody I had never met before. There you go. <laughs> and it was like, uh, hey, you know, I'm Gary. And it was like, oh, uh, hey, you know, nice to meet you. Um, so what, what do you think is going to happen with John? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, like, I don't know. I'm, you know, I can tell you what I've read. I'm tapped out. Yeah, I just, I don't know. So most people seem to think something like 20 to 25 games. You yeah. know, that's what most people seem to think. But I, I don't know. There uh, was the, the Sam Amico. Yeah. 
report, aggregation report from over the weekend of some in NBA circles believe it could be a half season. But yeah. again, this is all recycled, regurgitated speculation yeah, until if, we if, get more. Like, I, I could, t- and I'll wrap it up with this. Like, if, if you want to say, I don't think it's going to be that bad, you can tie it to, uh, well, Adam Silver did make a note on Thursday night. He was asked, like, do you think you did enough the first time? And um, he said, I thought we did, but, you know, maybe not. It's a fair point. You know, it's a fair question to ask. So that sounds like it could be he can't possibly not do enough again, so they might have to do more than they otherwise would. And then the other side of that is Adam Silver also, in literally the same press conference, said, you know, we have to – he made a point of this isn't just about a number of games. There's a lot of factors to consider, the implication being – we're dealing with a young person that we don't want to push further down a bad place. And so we could hammer him if that'll make everybody happy, but then what happens to him? So, similar thing to what Nick Saban's talked about before. Like, hey, okay, I got a player, got arrested. I kick him off the team but, and kick him out of school. What does that do? But where's he going then? Where's he going to be in two years? Why, why not try to save this person and help this person? And so I think the NBA, is, you could argue, needs to take that into account, at which point maybe the games isn't as significant as some have assumed it would be. Again, bottom line, I don't know. We'll see just as soon as these NBA finals are wrapped up. And I will say that by making it a Memphis problem versus mm-hmm. a job problem, all people are doing are participating in an endlessly lazy trope yes. about Memphis yes. that continues sports, entertainment, anything you want. And I mean, I also live in Memphis, that. and so, so, do you, so do you, so do you. So there do, are uh, yeah, you know, like hundreds of professional athletes who have rolled through the city yeah. of Memphis, collegiate athletes, right. people, humans, doctors. Tex. Desmond Bain lives in Memphis. Jaron Jackson Jr. lives in Memphis. Yeah. You know, this is, as I've said before, there are roughly 450 people who play in the NBA. 449 of them have been wildly successful at keeping guns off of Instagram. Only one hasn't. That, that's, it's not an NBA problem. It's not a Memphis problem. It's a Ja Morant issue that uh, anybody trying to make it out to be more than that is really reaching a little bit. My arms are sore from the reach. GP, <laughs> as always, great to have you in studio. It's good to be here. <laughs> we'll I'll see, see you next Monday. See everybody Derek later. Dillon for the Memphis Showboats. The Memphis Showboats who have won five games in a row. Will they ever lose again? I don't think so. We'll talk to Derek Dillon about it on the other side, get a bit of his story that led him here to Memphis when we come back. Obstructive sleep apnea is a sleep-related breathing disorder where a person's breathing is blocked or cut off while sleeping. It is seen in all age groups, but increases in frequency as we age and gain weight. Symptoms include snoring, excessive daytime sleepiness, gasping during sleep, and or insomnia. To schedule an appointment, contact Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialists at 901-276-6507. Let them help you breathe easy and sleep well. Get your Mardi Gras beads ready. Fat Tuesday Memphis is now open. The world's most famous daiquiri bar is opening on Main Street and will be the official pregame party destination for your Memphis Grizzlies. Try the famous Fat Tuesday 190 Octane, Cat 5 Hurricane, or Miami Vice, or create your own signature drink with 12 delicious flavors to choose from. Grab your friends and book your next birthday party or girls' night out at the new Fat Tuesday Memphis, located at 8 South Main Street, where we get the party started. Sauced by Will Smith is taking the championship taste of FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at LifeCareAMB.com. 
I mean, if you like crisp nacho fries covered in bold Mexican spices, then you have to try Steak Chili Verde Fries. They're like nacho fries, but with grilled steak topped with spicy verde sauce with kicks of jalapeno and lime. They're basically the younger brother of nacho fries, who's better looking, smarter, makes more money. But nacho fries has like 53 more followers, so it evens out. Steak Chili Verde Fries are here. Get them today, only at Taco Bell. A participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation which vary. Memphis fans can now enhance each moment of their day with the refreshingly luxurious taste of Cintron sparkling flavored energy beverages served exclusively at FedEx Forum. Cintron World is a lifestyle beverage brand inspiring everyone to create their lives with intention, energy, and style. As the official partner of the Grizzlies, Cintron is offering a 10% discount on your next online order when you use promo code GRIZZLIES10 at Cintron World com and follow the lifestyle on social at Cintron World. Drink it, live it. It is time for Memphis Mondays, and we are super psyched to have a special guest in studio. The Memphis Showboats have won five games in a row. A crucial piece of that has been wide receiver and special teams, Derek Dillon. <laughs> Derek Dillon, what's up? How's it going? It's going good. How are you? Oh, doing well. One, love this Memphis Showboats crew yeah. neck situation you've got here. Yeah, is yeah, this your favorite? favorite? This is my favorite. That's why I wore it. Okay. Favorite piece of gear. Yeah, yeah. Coming yeah go off on the website and get it. Go on. <laughs> you heard him. Go on the website, get your Showboats gear. Get out. There's only two home games left yep. in the season. How wild is that? That's crazy. The season is flying by. I can't believe it's two games left. <laughs> we were talking during the break leading into this, and obviously a bit of a rough start for mm -hmm. the Showboats this season, right. but now you guys have rattled off five wins in a row. What's been the biggest key to this turnaround? I mean, it's just, just like uh, Coach has always said, we, we, we like one play away from like getting everything started. So like we really harped on being detailed. So we really knuckled down and just got with all the details and fixed that, and it's starting to show on the field. You talk about one play at a time, and if there's one play that really like highlights your season and honestly represents the fun highlights that the showboats are putting out week in and week out, yeah. it's your big <laughs> missed kick return for a touchdown, 109 right. <laughs> yards, tied for the longest kick return in pro football history history at what point in this run did you know you were taking it all the right, way right there right when there? i cut back across the field <laughs> and my roommate actually i just see him waving it like come on come on look there he go he was waving like come on come on when i saw that i was like yeah everybody got the block i'm going to score this that was when you knew what was the response like did you just get a million calls Man, i i didn't even know i broke the record i'm gonna tie the record like i i came back into everybody Slapping my helmet, this and that, and then I, I peeked at my phone real quick at halftime. I seen I had like 40 messages. I'm like, I ain't never had this many messages. And then I got on social media after the game, and I was like, Wow, what's going on? Then I did an interview with Miss Stephanie, and that's when she told me like, you just tied the uh, the record for the longest uh, kick sick, well, miss kick. And I was like, Wow, I, it blew my mind. I didn't know it. Did you answer all of those messages? No, I did not. I still have some on red right now. I respect that. It's just, hard. Yeah, I just put it on social media. Thank everybody for congratulating me, and sorry I can't get to you. We had Jasmine Carson, who was on the national championship winning LSU women's mm -hmm. basketball team, and okay. she had a similar, like, just a breakout performance in that national championship right. oh, yeah, game. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she said just the notifications coming in, like you would look at your phone, and it was so overwhelming yeah. because you were just like gaining new followers and people reaching out exactly. and people you hadn't heard from in forever. Exactly. So I can understand that's a little overwhelming. Who's the coolest person you heard from after it happened? Uh, all, my, all my LSU buddies, like everybody from the national championship team. Wow. You guys are still pretty tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a we had a close group. Like the whole national championship team, like we was all close. We was just like that. Like defensive guys hanging with offensive guys. Like receivers hanging with O linemen. Like everybody just hung out with everybody. Fifteen and zero is a pretty memorable year, yeah, right. and for it to end with a national championship, exactly. of course. But is there one memory from that season that stands out to you as as your favorite piece of it all? It probably just the, the national championship I mean, coming in the locker room and dancing with Odell and all the other vets. <laughs> you know, it was just everybody was in there dancing with us, celebrating. Like, they just won the national championship also. It was a great feeling. What's OBJ like? Oh, he's crazy. He's a wild guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's a lot of fun, man. He's a lot of fun. When you look at the guys like 
Odell Beckham Jr. I know you have mentioned that like Jarvis Landry has always come back and helped mm-hmm. out, and you played with just a killer group yeah, of right. receivers from Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, DJ Shark, mm-hmm. Russell Gage. Russell Gage, that's my guy, right? That's your guy? Yeah, Russell Gage. He, he called me, like, as soon as I got off the field, that's one of my answers because, like, he, he just know, like, how big of a player it was, and he just congratulating, yelling. I can barely hear what he was saying. He was just yelling so loud. But, yeah, that's my guy. That's who I work out with on the offseason. So you do still continue to work out. And when you look at those guys who are in the league, which I assume that's the goal that you're ultimately mm-hmm. still chasing to get back in there, what's it like? Like, Do you learn from each other? Or are you constantly picking his brain on like how you can oh, yeah. advance your especially, game? Especially Russell because like, we, we play the same position in college, so I always just ask him, like, especially if he like, watch my game, and like, what you think I could do better on this route or what you think I could have did better on this right here and there. So we, we always – picking each other's brain like you know I like this I like that so yeah 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 we always do that all day is Joe Burrow as cool as he seems oh man cool as a fan (laughs) he's one of the coolest guys I know (laughs) do we think that Joe Burrow is definitively the coolest quarterback in the NFL most definitely most definitely what is it about him just his demeanor he's just a cool guy he walked cool he talked cool just just everything cool about even the way he dressed (laughs) (laughs) do you remember the first time that you met Joe Yeah, yeah 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 what was that like well, really, we, I, like, I'm not a very friendly person, so, like, yeah, he came up to me, talked to me, like, yeah, yeah, can't wait to get excited. Like, yeah, all right, bro, yeah. But then after we got to knowing him a little more, yeah, it was, we just, we just really, we just really clicked because he used to be my, um, like, we ride to the games on the bus. Like, me and him, that was my, my bus partner, so, like, every game we sat together. Did you guys listen to music together or nah, just, like, chat about life? We got, we got different We got different type of music. Different types? <laughs> What's your type of music? I just like Raw Wave and stuff like that. God. He listened to Kid Cudi. I, I that's not my type of guy. <laughs> you haven't listened to the new Kid Cudi song that came out nah, this weekend? Nah. <laughs> got to get on it. It's pretty, it's pretty good, I might, actually. I might try it out. Okay, okay. That LSU team was just... It was such a, a fun season of college football, obviously. So many massive personalities, and, and one of the biggest personalities is Coach O. Yeah, like, just yeah. one of those iconic college football characters mm-hmm. and he's a real person he's a coach and led you guys to a national <laughs> championship what is the most like quintessential coach o story that you can share like where someone hears it and they say that coach o. <laughs> oh well really for me i would say it was against auburn i had a big catch to uh get us back in the game and and every time he see me how, how, how long was that touchdown that was his go-to and it was like 71 yards and like, yeah there we go baby there we go he just walk off every time <laughs> does everybody do a coach O impression yeah, yes yes if people on the team they just bring oh come up to me like how, is this close to coach O? like yeah do the voice and everything I'm like yes bro you, you you sound just like him <laughs> okay give me your you just gave a little a little bit <laughs> but give me your best like dig deep and give me coach O. <laughs> Uh, or how it go. It's like, let's go, baby. Let's go. Scrap your helmet. <laughs> it's perfect. And if someone heard that, they would immediately know, oh, he's just doing a Coach O impression. <laughs> that's, that's the way that it goes. No, I, I think it's awesome. And obviously, your career after LSU, you had an opportunity with the New York Giants. What was that like after not being drafted, getting signed as an undrafted free agent, and experiencing that, that first taste of really trying to make it in the NFL? Uh, it, was, it was pretty cool. I, uh, I loved everything about the Giants. They gave me a real opportunity and everything. And it just didn't work out toward the end because of injuries and all. But it was a great experience, and I learned a lot at the Giants. And it was, like, one of my favorite places to be. <laughs> Big New York fan? Uh, yes, more definitely. <laughs> Especially right. coming from a country town. Yes, I love New York. You're from a, a small town right. in Louisiana. What's it called again? Yeah, Franklinton, Louisiana. Franklinton. Less yeah. than 4,000 people. Yes. Yeah? Yes. What was it like growing up in such a small place? Man, it, it's just everybody knows everybody. Like, everywhere I go, everybody knew me. Everybody knew my family. So it's really... Nowhere I can go without nobody knowing who I am. How supportive is that community of oh, you man, now? My community, I, I love my community. Big shout out to them because they, they support me each and every way because like after the touchdown, there was a lot of people on Facebook reposting me, uh, calling me and everything. So they support everything I do and they, they always been behind me since high school. You were the first kid from your high school to ever receive a D1 scholarship. How hard did you have to work oh, to get recognized? What was your recruiting process like? It, it was extremely hard because, like we said, I was the first one, so a lot of people didn't know about me. So it all started when I went to uh, to a Southern Miss camp. And after I went to the Southern Miss camp, I did amazing at the camp, and they offered me. And I think uh, Mississippi State caught wind of it. And after Mississippi State caught wind of it, they came and offered me. And then it just started pouring in right after that. And just like each and every other week, I had a coach coming to my school and people was like, oh my God, I, like they'll come get me out of, like, like classmates, they'll be in the window, come here, come here, come here. 
I, I walk out, like, I got to go to the restaurant, I walk out, what's up? And it was like, man, I just seen, like, Tennessee coach, or I just seen Florida coach. And it was just crazy. Like, they, they were just starstruck. Well, in a town of less than 4,000, if right. a big-name SEC coach right. comes rolling <laughs> in, like, I feel like that's pretty big news. What ultimately ended up being, like, the deciding factor that LSU was the right spot? Oh, well, because I was originally committed to Florida all the way up until right before signing day, and that's when uh, Muschamp had got fired. And, and then when Muschamp got fired, that's when LSU came at me real hard. But, you know, you growing up in Louisiana, you, you automatically going to be an LSU fan. So... All they had to do was push real hard, and they did. And I just looked at the factors, you know, being being at home, all my family can come see me. They're they're a winning team. They put out for uh, NFL product daily. I mean, uh, yearly. So I was, feels I was like saying, daily. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so many of us. So yeah. So I was like, might as well. And it turned out great for me. Was football always your sport? Yeah. See, I've been playing football ever since I was like four, I believe. When was the first time that you knew that you were pretty damn good? Uh, when I always played with the older guys and I was making plays on them and, and beating them. And so like, I was like five and six playing with the seven and eight and I was still scoring touchdowns. So that's when I knew. That was the time. And look at you now. Now right. you're getting calls from the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I yeah. heard that after your record tying return, mm -hmm. they asked you for your gloves. Yeah, what, right, right. what went down with that? Oh, yeah, I just know I got a call from Miss Stephanie. She was like, yeah, I just talked to a pro uh, Hall of Fame, and they, uh, they like to have your gloves to put it on display from the uh, touchdown. I was like, well, yeah, I'll take them. And that was great. Well, that was my first time wearing them that game. I just bought them. <laughs> so they were new gloves? Yeah, it was new gloves. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> I mean, does that just feel absolutely surreal to you? Like, right. as you're continuing onward through this journey, mm -hmm. you're playing in the USFL, you're here in Memphis, and now a piece of your game is forever going to be a right. part of the Hall of Fame. Right. And that's what, that's what's still mind-blowing because I still can't believe it. Like, it's going to be there forever. And everybody tell me all the time, like, that's, that's going to be forever. That's going to be in history forever. So now they always call me Mr. 109. <laughs> Mr. 109. Do you like that? <laughs> not really. Cause not I don't, really? <laughs> <laughs> not really because I don't like being in the spotlight. I like to, you know, just lay back and just do what I do. You're a wide receiver who doesn't like being in the spotlight? Yeah, that's weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> what a different different approach for that. Right. Okay, what's a nickname that you do like if you don't like Mr. 109? Oh, I like D-Dill. A lot of people call me D-Dill or D-Dillon. You know, it's real laid back, chill is my name. So. Rhymes with chill. Yeah, D-Dill. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. very chill. All right, well, we're going to call you Mr. 109 because <laughs> it, was, it was pretty great. <laughs> if the USFL postseason started today, the Memphis Showboats would be in it. How mm -hmm. often are you guys, if at all, talking about the postseason, or does Coach Haley truly keep it coach speak one game at a time? Exactly, one game at a time, because we don't want to look ahead, because like, our division is so tight, one loss, we can go back at the bottoms, because like, everybody's just neck and neck, so we just try to keep it one game at a time, and just win, and everything will play out. And you guys have won five in a row. Right. How, not difficult, but what, what's the challenge like for you as you hope that the Memphis Showboats are, are a step in your journey and would mm -hmm. obviously like to get to that next stage in the NFL. What's it like balancing knowing that, you know, you're still trying to take another step in your career and trying to prove that, that you deserve that next shot? Mm -hmm. Me, I just, just try to stay consistent. Like, that's the biggest thing from, like, being a professional, just being consistent. And as long as I stay consistent and keep making plays like I make plays, everything takes care of itself. All right. I want to do a quick word association with you where when I say a name – you're going to tell me one word that comes with those people. Okay? okay. You ready? Yes. We're going to start with Coach Haley. Coach Haley. Oh, uh, funny guy. <laughs> no, I'm going to say guy. a non-dancer. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Now I can't just say a, a one word. A non-dancer? Have you seen a video after we beat the New Orleans team? <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's trying, man. No, man. Brutal. Just can't do that. Wow. <laughs> Throwing the shade at your coach on a Monday morning. I like how you went from funny guy to yeah, he's a non-dancer. But aren't the funny guys usually the non-dancers? Oh, but man, you can have some type of moves. That was just terrible. Can you help him? <laughs> I know. I can can anyone help him? Who's the best dancer on the team? Uh, Juwan Washington. Juwan Washington. Yes. All right. So he he's going to take the lead when yes. you guys are doing a championship yes, exactly. dance. We'll, we'll speak it into existence. <laughs> All right. Well, we got great words for Coach Haley. Next up, I'll ask you uh, for Cole Kelly. Cole Kelly. Ah, oh, let me see. <laughs> oh, man, Cole Kelly. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. I'm going to say a giant because he's, he's tall, he's big. <laughs> okay, that's literal. I like it. Next, we're going to do Joe Burrow, but you can't say cool. Oh, that's... Mm, uh, yep. Joe Burrow. I'm going to say he's different. He's different. All right, Jamar Chase. 
<laughs> Jamar Chase. Ah. Uh, uh, I don't want to say nothing bad about him because that's my guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> we always talk crap about each other. Like, it's hard to say something good about him. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, arrogant. Arrogant. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to say that. Now we're going to the wide receiver territory <laughs> that you know and love. All right, if, if Jamar Chase is arrogant, what's Justin Jefferson? Even more arrogant. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, DJ Chark. Oh, man. Now, he's a dancer. He is a dancer. Yes. Of all those guys, he's the best dancer? Yes. Okay. And Russell Gage will end with him. Oh, Russell Gage. Man, I got so many words for him. But I would say he's a real comedian. He jokes all day. A true comedian. True comedian. Can you dance? No. Oh, see, there you go. We're back at the funny guys don't know how to dance. It's, it's how it is. I'll, I'll end with, with you. If you had to describe yourself and, and your polite personality in one word, what would it be? I'd say I'm chill. Chill. We're back, back to Dill the Chill. Yep. That's how we go. <laughs> Derek, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Right, this no has been wonderful. We're so proud of Memphis Showboats. If you have not been to a Showboats game, I'm telling you, get out there. It's a cheap ticket. Concessions are cheap, and it's a good time. This team has won five games in a row, only two games left in the regular season, and then perhaps looking at a playoff opportunity. Exactly. But we'll take it one game at a time. One game at a time. Derek, appreciate you being in studio. I'm going to go ahead and wrap the show up, Bennett Doyle. Great. I got two thumbs up. I don't think we have to take another break. So we will end it there. We will be back tomorrow on a Tuesday. Bennett Doyle going to be back with us. CJ Hurt will be back on Wednesday. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the start of your week. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.